today we're gonna, I'm going to be teaching about, well, talking about emotional behavior disorder students. And I had experience teaching these students in 2009 and 2010 in a school, a residential school for boys. Um, they were mandated by Suffolk County to, to attend this program. And um, the majority of these boys, about 90% of them, all had some sort of emotional behavior disorder. So it was something that was uh, challenging and rewarding at the same time because I was able to assist these students with their educational process. But, um, but we're going to go further into that a little bit later. What I want to explain first is what emotional behavior disorder is. And first we want to look at how it's defined. And the federal government and under the IDEA Act in 2004, this is how they defined it. And we're going to talk about some problems with it as well. Um, one or more of the following characteristics. Inability to learn not related to other factors, meaning their inability to learn is is, is um, detrimental due to the fact that they have this disorder. Um, inability to maintain satisfactory peer te and teacher relationships and inappropriate feelings and behavior under normal conditions and frequently unhappy or depressed. And there are issues with this definition, especially this one word satisfactory, and we're going to see that right now. Um, there are problems with the idea definition. It, it's good that the federal government has acknowledged this as a disorder, but the definition is vague and a little subjective. Um, what are satisfactory relationships? What exactly does that mean? How can we define what a satisfactory relationship is? And what does inappropriate behavior look like? So it's vague in its definition and description, but the National uh, Society for uh, Psychologists, they define it a little bit differently, and they do actually include these in their definition. And unfortunately, the idea definition does not define, define or apply any students who are socially or maladjusted in their definition. So there, there is some vagueness to it, but again, it's good that the federal government is actually acknowledging that it is a disorder that needs attention. And you know, ultimately, it is important for us to understand that these are the students that we're going to be encountering. And some of the characteristics that these students have are externalizing behaviors. These are behaviors that are outwardly occurring. Tantrums, threats of violence, non-compliance with, with any rules, regulations, and property destruction. Could be throwing a desk, could be uh, destroying a book, could be breaking a wall. Any of these things could occur with a mostly behavior disorder student. Um, internalizing behaviors. Uh, these are the behaviors that aren't out on the surface that will occur, such as being shy, withdrawn from activities, not wanting to really participate in the daily routines and activities of the class, very quiet to themselves. And another characteristic is uh, they're easily upset and very difficult to calm down. So these are characteristics that we have to be aware of when we're, when we're working with emotionally behavior disorder students. Some examples of emotional behavior or EBD uh, disorders are anxiety, which it's excessive worrying. And these are the characteristics that you'll see the student, you know, um, maybe fidgeting, um, walking, pacing, things like that, very nervous about daily activities, impulsiveness. Um, this is when the student will call out answers, call out maybe inappropriate terms. Um, vulgarities, things like that, and um, a lot of tension, uh, nervousness, as I mentioned before. Uh, also, depression is another example. Frequent, under this, the student is frequently sad, um, poor concentration, their academics suffer due to both, both of these disorders, and um, they isolate themselves. They tend to be isolated from daily activities, don't want to be involved with what's going on in the classroom, and require a lot of attention. And aggressive behavior is also a big part of emotional behavior disorder, and that's something that we'll talk about a little bit later as well. Um, when we're teaching these students, we have to keep in mind that even though they have a disorder, it doesn't mean that they're not going, we're not going to be able to work with them and reach certain behavior and education goals. There has to be a plan in place to help these students. And behavior management, 
that's one of the biggest things that we can work with these students on. And first and foremost, it starts with the teacher and through clear classroom rules. Uh, that needs to be expressed to the students exactly what the rules are, restated, have them posted somewhere in the room that could be visible for the students, and really, you know, the students can help you make the rules as well. This way they, you can acknowledge to them that, yes, the, these are the class rules. If something does occur that's against the, the, the class rules, it'll be acknowledged by the student. Uh, behavior modification techniques. This is something that's very important. Reinforcing positive behavior. Whenever the student does engage in positive behavior, it needs to be recognized, whether through the reward process um, for, for the student, uh, positive reinforcement through statements by the teacher needs to be done on a daily basis. Self-management skills. Now this is something that is very, very is imperative for, for emotional behavior disorder students. Um, to manage their own behavior, to be aware of their behaviors, to acknowledge them, the, the behaviors. For example, say the student um, does something inappropriate in the class, yells at the teacher, talks back to the teacher, uh, disrupts a lesson, the student should record this, you know, as it's occurring or right after it's acknowledged. And this way, later on, it could be reflected on in teacher meetings, psychologist meetings, social worker meetings. This way, the student is well aware of the behaviors that they're, that they're engaging in, and it could be worked on. And you could also celebrate the, 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 you know, the, <clears throat> the victories and work on the areas of opportunity through this process as well, under the self-management and self-evaluation. Uh, also, peer tutoring and teacher modeling. That's, you know, pair the, the student with a positive peer. Sh they could see, visually see, what the, what the behavior looks like, what positive behavior looks like, and role model it for them. And how can the teacher accommodate for the EBD student? And this is important because we need to understand the accommodations to make this the environment for the student the, the best it can possibly be. And assigning occasional breaks is, is, a, is a huge key to this. Uh, the emotional behavior dis disorder student could become restless, um, inability to concentrate, those characteristics. Um, assigning occasional break can alleviate some of the pressures that these students feel during class time. Assigned seating. Assure that this, this student is seated near peers that are positive role models, um, close to the teacher, close to the teacher assistant, things like that. They use a lot of proximity, closeness to the student. Extend the time on assignments. That's essential too because the frustration levels can, get, can uh, grow during assignments, especially writing assignments or long assignments. We could also break assignments up into segments to help the student as well, so that so they're in segments, so they're not getting frustrated during the process. Pull out time for further instruction and evaluation, and this is important as well. They could they leave the classroom, go to a resource room. Um, this is an opportunity for the teacher, for the resource room teacher, to discuss any evaluations or possible you know remedies for any of the issues that they're having. They could express any concerns. We need to hear their voice, and that could be a time for them to speak also with the teacher, with the classroom teacher as well, to acknowledge any issues that might be occurring that we could help them with. And also psychologists and social worker interventions as well are very important, working with the team. It's very important to, to work with the team and all be aware of exactly what's going on, the progress of the student, also parent involvement. Parent involvement is the utmost importance when working with emotional behavior disorder students due to the fact that at home there could be some remedies and techniques that we can incorporate into the classroom because ultimately the parent knows the child better than anybody else. And a great technique for this is crisis prevention intervention. But before I get into that, the fact that students, emotional behavior disorder students, they struggle in school greatly. They are high at risk for certain things that occur in social, social problems. One of them is drinking alcohol. Alcoholism does occur with emotional behavior disorder students and they're very high at risk if, we're, if not treated properly. Um, secondly, drug use. 
does occur with emotional behavior disorder students. They're very high at risk for drug use. And ultimately, this could, these kind of activities, such as gang activities, alcohol use, and drug use, could lead to incarceration. And some statistics from 1975 to 2010, uh, the numbers have gone down. And this is 225,000 youths in juvenile detention throughout the country That's in two, as of 2010. The numbers have gone down a bit, but the numbers are still way too high. And of those 225,000, roughly 60 to 70 percent of them are emotional behavior disorder students or children with emotional behavior disorders. So if we were able to remedy the problems within the classroom and help these students, they can avoid going into residential programs like the one that I taught in. They can avoid going into incarceration. Um, we, it, it's possible to solve all the problems in the classroom, but working with emotional behavior disorder students, it's imperative that we, we focus on the techniques and the tactics to help these students to avoid going into incarceration. And crisis prevention intervention is something that can help us avoid going into juvenile detention. And while I was working with the, the teens in this program, crisis prevention intervention was one of the key factors to helping these students to de-escalate potentially violent situations or even to just calm down the, the student that has anxiety or some sort of frustration at the time just to de-escalate their behavior from allowing it to go any further and for potentially violent situations. And the way to do this under the crisis prevention intervention is it's a lot of nonverbal techniques. Um, you want to definitely avoid raising your voice. That's first and foremost. And nonverbal techniques are important. Body stance, distance from the student. Facial expressions, you want to have non-threatening facial expressions. You want to actively listen. Actively listen can go a far way. If we listen to the student, we listen to what they're saying, it goes a far way. And they can feel that. They can understand that you're listening to them. An acknowledgement of their feelings. And that's really what crisis prevention intervention is. And just for a brief example, what's your problem? Peter, is everything okay? No, I have a bad day. Bad day at school, bad day yesterday, last night. Parents yelling at me for stupid things. I don't even do. I don't know what the problem is. Do you, I can see that you're upset. Do you want to talk more about this? Not really. I feel like it's personal issues. Okay. Do you, would you like to take a break from activities, maybe sit down over there and hang out for a few minutes? And you could come back and join us in a little bit when you're feeling a little bit better? Yes, sir. Okay, why don't you go do that now, Peter? And through, through utilizing the techniques of crisis prevention intervention, as you can see, I had a non-threatening demeanor. I didn't raise my voice. The student was upset. He was upset about an act, something that happened at home, came to school, and this is something frequent that will happen with an emotional behavior disorder student. And to remedy this, we do have to utilize techniques like crisis prevention intervention in order for the student to feel like there is somebody listening to them, somebody that does understand them. And that's 